Um, you know, I, I, I just can't get away from this subject. It's just staying with me. I just like it so much. Speaking on sin. <laughs> I guess because I've not heard people in this new YouTube, Facebook live streaming, and all the TED Talks, I've never heard people just talk about sin. But I like talking about it because the more I study it, the more it becomes alive to me. And sin will cause your life to slow down. Disobedience to God brings delay. Meaning that the time clock of God is blessings for your life. They don't stop, but they're delayed. And we need to take a far more adversarial position on all sin. We need to take God's view of it and also understand the power that we have over it in Jesus' name as spirit-filled believers. Are you out there? And I don't know about you, but it's enjoyable. If you take a look at, it really begins theologically, Romans 5.12 to Romans 8, or so is it 31 to 30? The last verse of 8. Half of 5, 6, 7, and 8. Those chapters are the freedom, as the freedom proclamation to the body of Christ how that we are called to reign in life, take charge of all sin, kick sin out of your life, walk in the spirit, walk in the fullness of the freedom Christ gave us. And it's like a different kind of lifestyle. And especially when we live in this world where everything is saturated in sin, and we deal with the concepts of, of sin all the time. I have to as a pastor. I get 911 calls every week. You know what? It's okay. A toddler, when he's learning to walk, falls down. What does a mother do? Pick the toddler up and let it go again. So that's what we do around here. We pick you back up and we help you walk again. But um, it'll be nice if you get past the toddler stage where you can stand on your own and help somebody else up who's falling down. Amen? So we have grace and mercy for everybody here. But I promise you, there is an inheritance that God has for us, and it will come through the Word of God. I believe I've got some new things to share with you that will help you and be a blessing to your life because it's God's Word. So, Father, make alive your Word to us as we read it in Jesus' name. So I want to go back to Romans 6. I'm getting to love Romans 6. I want to start with verse 5. Let's just read it. For, with, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, which we have, if we accepted Christ, we're united in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his, of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, the old spirit man that was against God, was crucified, meaning it was taken out. It was eliminated. We were crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with. That we, we should no longer be slaves of sin. Now right there, you could stop there and shout for a long time and just understand what he's just saying. That there is a place that for every believer, our inheritance is, that we're no longer doing things we don't want to do. And catching the condemnation because of it. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Have you died yet? Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. Knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. What causes death? Sin. 
it has no dominion over him. If it doesn't have dominion over him, it doesn't have any dominion over me. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also, that's so powerful. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves, consider yourselves, think along these lives, lines to be dead indeed to sin. Say, I am dead, I am dead to, sin. to sin. And then the Bible goes, like, you can stop confessing now. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he says exactly what Jesus went through. We can, we can parallel that with it in our own life and know according to the word of God that we have conquered sin. Therefore, no, do not let sin reign. Therefore, do not let. That's the biggest word. Do not let. Do not let. Don't let. My wife shout, don't let the dog in. I mean, don't allow the door to come open. The dog is going to scooch in. Don't let it in. Don't, don't let mean that's a choice thing. Do not let. Do not let. You see, the life of the Spirit is a life where you do not let the sins of the flesh come in and take you over and begin to um, lessen the power of your character. Do you know what? If you are born into the kingdom at a young age and you're taught well, the fruit of the Spirit will be growing more and more and more in your life. And you really have a head start on others that jump in midlife or later in life. It's the truth. I mean, people that, that jump in midlife. You know, they're good, they, they see God, but there's that roughness that courses to them. It's like the difference between burlap and silk. It's just a different, they're both cloth. But you, the, the purpose of getting your children connected to the word early and begin to live it out. I'm thinking about Eric and Rochelle Fox's kids. You know, I've just watched them grow up in church. And I watched them serve. And Gabriel was up there helping me with the sound. I was putting the prayer meeting on. You know, we have prayer meetings from 12 to 1 here. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we have prayer meetings every morning, 6 to 7. That was just a news flash. And then we have a prayer meeting uh, Friday from 4 to 5. I, I went to the 4 to 5 one. That's quite a group of people. And, you know, it's hard to say I have a schedule conflict between 4, 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. <laughs> the only conflict you have is sleeping. But... Uh, there, I was talking to Gabriel, and uh, just so, are you up there? Your camera. Just so, Gabriel, he was just so gracious and helpful. I needed this, so let me, let me help you, Pastor. And yeah, just let me get this straight for you. And I'd be glad to do that. Just, I said, that's a smooth operator. Uh, but I honored, I mean, I Godly Christian character will draw more people to Christ than someone who claims to be a Christian and then acts out in the flesh. That does more damage to the body of Christ. This, it's the absolute truth. They want to see a life. You see, okay, you claim to know Christ, and even when people laugh at you, and they may make fun of you, but they are watching you because they want to see, is this really real? And so we got to get this in us. These chapters... From, uh, you know, 512 to 8. If you can get those, go read over it. Read over it, over it. And uh, it says here, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. Shut the door to sin. It's going to eat you up. You got any sin, it's got death behind it. Does that make sense? When you get angry at home, you can get angry and you never control that anger, that seed going in that marriage relationship. And you will reap from that. It may not happen right away. But the wife will come to a place where I'm done. It gets quiet in here. But sometimes we kind of think we're going to act any odd way to our partner. Will they always be there? Maybe not. 
You wake up one day, and, th and they're gone. How did that happen? Then you call me, 911. <laughs> Better. I know I'm, I have to be honest with you. Sin destroys relationships. Sin destroys marriages. Sin tears up homes. Sin causes sickness to come, not, but it opens the door to sickness. Sin causes unhappiness and strife and confusion. You need to understand when Paul said, if you can take care of the sin, you can step into the life that God has for you. That's it. And so you gotta, you got to understand, this is not just something light. This is like life and death. So he says, do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. You know another word, don't go clubbing. It's amazing what people do or where they go. Don't see an R-rated movie. Well, no, no, I'm into the art, and it's just one scene. There's always one scene. No, 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 seriously, there's always a scene. And everybody's just watching me just say, move on, pastor. <laughs> but don't present your body, don't, be, don't present yourself in a company of people that are anti-Christ, unless you're there on, this is my job, I've got to be there, I understand that. But they should know you're a believer. Let them make fun of you. Don't be a stealth believer. Let them know. I still, when I was in the, in the business world, when someone would curse or take Christ's name in vain, I would speak up and say, you know, I'm a believer. I would say it every time. And that really hurts me when you, when you say that. And there may be 10 other guys. I'm the only guy. You, gotta, you have to man up. Well, I'm not be accepted. I'm accepted by Christ. I could care less about your acceptance. You know, come on, take a little persecution. We have to in these days. Well, you're not politically correct. No, I can do it with love. I'll tell you what, Jesus, uh, I watch some of the stuff that goes on, some of the young millennials, how they debate against stuff. I'm going, Jesus, they just need, they just need a healing. They need a brain. <laughs> they, they, somewhere they lost it growing up. One-on-one -on -one is eight. So we just got to help them. But I just say, you just you have to reach out to them with love and say, you know what? The gospel message is the answer for all the demonic activity that's got your mind so screwed up. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, so don't present your body. So that's a choice again. I'm not even getting my sermon. I'm just commenting on these incredible scriptures. Um, but present yourselves to God. As being alive from the dead. You present yourselves to God on a daily basis. You present them in prayer, in, in the word, and in praise to God, and in coming to church services. That's one of the greatest ways to present yourself to God. Coming to prayer meetings in Jesus' name. Coming to things that where God's anointing will touch you. Present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Use your body to help God's kingdom get further down the line in Jesus' name. Like you cannot go backsliding when you go on a mission trip and your whole day is spent about giving Jesus away. You cannot help but grow. You cannot help but get touched by God. You come away going, oh. Amen. But sin shall not dominate you, have dominion over you. Then who, who wrote that? God. Sin, let's read it out loud. Sin shall not have dominion over me, over, over you, whatever. But over me, sin, let's just make it personal. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Say it again. Sin shall not have dominion over me. One more time. Sin shall not have dominion over me. In Jesus' name. Now you can look at what any sins, the, the, the sins of the, of the word are given us in the book of Galatians chapter 5. And it talks about sexual immorality. Now let me tell you what, let me, let me just get talking about sex sins a minute. Demons know all about the portal illicit sex gives them. They know all about it. 
It has been from time immemorial their number one button, their push. Why don't they get another one? Because it works so well. When Israel fell away from God and they followed these other gods, one of the things they don't tell you in the text, although it gets inferred, but you go through history. They talk about the grove of trees or Baal. They had male and female prostitution going on as part of the act of worship. Satanism, everybody that has read about Satanism, Satanism, having sex on the altar is common practice, as well as drinking blood of live human beings. Why do they do that? Because it gives them access into your life. So you need to realize that when the apostles told the Gentiles, listen, keep yourself from, don't, don't eat blood or eat animals that are strangled and stay away from sexual immorality. For us in 2021, forget about the strangled animals, forget about drinking blood, let's just stick with sexual immorality. If you can keep yourself clean sexually, listen to me young people, if you can keep, keep yourself clean sexually, you'll shut the door to the enemy. But when you crack the door, pornography cracks the door. Illicit relationships outside where God ordains. Sex can only be qualified to be blessed under the marriage covenant. Every act of sex outside the marriage covenant has the curse on it. Does that make sense? So you say, what's going on out there? Let me tell you what's going on in the world. I really believe the main reason that people want to believe in, create, uh, in evolution, because if there is no God, they don't have to follow through with the sixth commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. I believe that was the major reason for the evolutionary doctrine. I don't want to admit there's a God. If there's no God, then I'm not accountable to God. Then I can jolly well do what I want to do. And the first thing I want to do is have sex whenever I want to. And that's how the world lives. How many know that's a lie? But the Bible says for Christians, we don't have to allow sin in. Now, let me just say this as a pastor. I am a pastor. I live a clean life. But let me just say this. I'm not so stupid to think I can never fall. You're smoking weed if you believe that. You've got to watch yourself and you've got to guard yourself very carefully as you go through the life. We have a lot of women on our staff. I make sure I never make a comment on their clothing, on anything about them. That's, I'm, pro, I'm professional. We never do that. It's business, business only. And we're very careful about how we get around in this house. And we don't hang around together, uh, a staff, male, female, in a closed room. We work against that, travel, we do everything we can. I've got windows every place. I mean, I've even put glass doors, and we've had solid doors. If there's a solid door, there's a, there's a glass door. I don't ever have it shut where no one knows what's going on behind those glass doors, behind the doors, okay? And then we have to be accountable. I mean, but uh, I guess I deal with it so much, and I don't broadcast, but I have to deal with it on a one-to-one -one with people. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Understand, greater men or women than you have fallen. And you've got to understand, you've got to keep your nose to this book and you've got to keep your heart, I mean, you've got to be aware of what's happening out there, how Satan wants to take the fire out but if you get this inside your spirit, you don't have to have, you don't have to sin. You got that? But you got to be very aware. You got to be like, you got to be like this. You can't be like this. You're going to get clocked. <laughs> be very aware. And thank you for praying for this pastor. Thank you. Because that's what my protection is. I don't, listen, we got to pray. We got to pray. But you need to pray. 
for your own family and for your own life in Jesus' name. It says, sin shall not dominate you for you're not under the law but under grace. Now flip over here to this other passage here. And I'm going to get to teaching here. I just want to exhort you a little bit more on this. I cannot get enough of this book. In verse 16, it says here, um, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether it's sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. But God be, th be thanked that though you were once slaves of sin, I, I once was a slave of sin, but I'm not anymore. Neither are you. Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you present your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. I want to close with one last scripture out of 8.1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not, who not, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Hallelujah. So faith is only kept strong when we stay out of sin. Sin destroys faith. Sin destroys fellowship. First John one six says that if we if we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and don't tell the truth. We've got to walk with an open heart before God and be quick to repent. This altar is, is, if you ever feel like out of sorts or something is happening in your life and there's an altar call given, just come to the altar. Humble yourself. Kneel down the altar. Say, God, I want this thing broken off me. Or if you go to an elder or a pastor, say, listen, I want to confess something that's major to you. I want to get this off my life. And let your life be exposed to that one individual and break that thing off you. Present your life to them and let them see that broken off you in Jesus' name. And then present yourself to God to for good things. That's the whole thing about service for the Lord. Feeding the poor. Running people to Christ. Going on one-to-one. -one. Every other week we go on the streets of Roswell. And then get involved with the missions. Just throw yourself in there. Just say, God, use my life for your glory. And you young people, stay busy for Jesus. That's the only way I can. Listen, I don't want to talk about how to avoid temptation. Get busy for Jesus. When I was single, I just made myself busy. It was work, Holy Ghost prayer and my word and working for God. I didn't have time to lay around. You keep yourself busy for God. Keep yourself busy. Keep yourself occupied. Amen. Your mind start wandering. And the next thing you know, you'll be getting yourself goofed up in Jesus' name. You keep the fire alive that way. And so I want to talk about just, just, just a quick review. Avoid temptation. Stay, you know, to be tempted, I said last week, was it two weeks ago? To be tempted does not mean you sinned. Remember that? I shared that last week. Well, because the devil will put a foul thought and he'll say, look at you wretched thing. You had that thought. You're an unholy person. Don't take the thought. Remember that? I told you to do this. <laughs> Spit it out in Jesus' name. That's not my thought. That's a, uh, that's a demonic thing. You cannot allow yourself to be condemned by that. He'll try to condemn you with thoughts. He'll put the thought in your head and then say, you thought that. No, I didn't think that. That came from, not from my heart. It came from you, devil, in Jesus' name. And I'm going to give it back. I'm not taking it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we need to understand these things in order we can walk in the freedom God's given us. And we need to understand that uh, that Jesus was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. And so we got to be understand that we are, no, don't receive condemnation. If you feel condemnation coming on you, then listen, Lord, I forgive me, I repent, and I receive your forgiveness, and then stand in your righteousness. But you've got to have a pure spirit. You've got to stand in righteousness. That's another teaching we'll get into. But you've got to have that deep within you, because otherwise the devil will trip you up because it affects your faith. Condemnation affects your faith. It'll make it weak. It'll cause you to draw away from God. And then whenever you get attacked by the devil with the temptation of sin, respond quickly. Don't mull over it. Well, it is kind of interesting. She is kind of pretty. 
No, I'm telling you what, you better respond quickly. Jesus rebuked the devil as soon as the devil said, can you imagine? If you turn these stones into bread, you can turn these stones into bread, Jesus. And Jesus could have, he's 40 days fasting. He said, let me think about that. That would make a big loaf, that rock right there. And I could prophesy butter into it, and it would go down really well. Yeah, the more I think about that loaf, I'm smelling that fresh break bread. My God. He didn't do it. He didn't, he, you know, you got to rebuke quickly. He said, immediately Satan tempted with that thought, and you got to do that with the, with the temptations in your mind. When they come in there, don't mull them. Say, no, in Jesus' name. Go from me in Jesus' name. Put your hand on your head. Say, I plead the blood. Put, do it right now. Put your hand on your head. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Get out of my mind. Satan, get out of my head. I rebuke that thought in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands out. Literally, you got to do that kind of stuff. Don't allow it to mold. No, no, no. I'm getting rid of it in Jesus' name. I'm not letting that linger. Amen. And then you, one last thing. I read. This is a type of review, but this thing about sin. There is a gravitational pull on, that sin has to your flesh. Don't underestimate its power. I meet people all the time. I never thought I would, but I did. I thought I was above that. Half the prisoners that I have met in prison, half of them, they're there for murder, rape, everything else. They claimed to know Christ. What happened? Because if you have a devil get on you and you don't know how to resist him and you yield to your flesh, you'll go against your spirit but commit things that will put you in prison. You just have to understand it. So devils and sin are connected. Sin gives them access to you. Demons will literally get behind your flesh and make your flesh crave something ten times more than it would in the natural. A demon will. They're, they're demons, all kind of demons. They're demons that will make you eat more than you need. Absolutely. Eat more than you need. We're not called to live to eat. We're called to eat to live. We've got to get that right. And I remember, I mean, sometimes they're demons. They're like pig demons. <laughs> remember that sister of yours? It was a sister in the Lord, and they had this. Everyone got like started, all of a sudden started overeating, and they were eating. They said, Why can't I just can't control myself? You know, there's like a quarter stick of butter with three slices of bread, and they just finished a meal. And everyone was getting, you know, as they say in Spanish, muy gordo. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and remember this, and then, the, uh, and then they, she went upstairs to the attic or something. I felt the Lord said, lead her up to the attic. And I, I went to the attic, and I saw in the spirit, the place is full of like spiritual pigs. They're little pigs. Oink, 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 oink out there. But they were, but they were infecting the whole family. And when they broke the power that said, every, his command to his pigs, get out in Jesus' name. Everyone's appetite came back to normal. And the peace came into home. I remember watching, remember Ryan's Steakhouse? They used to have it here. Thank God they closed them down. But listen, <laughs> the last time I, have I told the story? I have, I've told the story, right? I won't tell it again. Tell it again. Well, I'm, I'm eating there with my, my kids and we're having, it's a buffet style. And there are people, the only way I could, remember the Cabbage Patch Dolls? They had two kids, five and six, that looked like cabbage catch dolls. Humongous. Their eyes were buried in the, in the fat that came out from their face. And the mother and father were like cabbage patch dolls, but in size. And the guy's gut was so gigantic. They were just humongous. His gut was so big that his T-shirt cut about halfway up his belly. The other half was exposed. And they were so huge, they walked like this. With both arms out, they would waddle. 
And I remember them, they, I just it was like, I'm, I'm eating, and all I hear, <laughs> I'm going, <laughs> I, I am not kidding. And the little kids, the little kids were kids, Daddy, I'm full, I'm so full. And I remember they said, eat it, eat it. I said, my God. I said, I cannot. And so when they had eaten, like, I don't know, five plates, he'd waddle back up there, and he'd come right by me, and i go, Man, I, I just lost all my appetite. I never want to eat again. I want to, I want to be in a permanent fast. And he waddled up there and started loading up again, just loading up, loading up, loading up. I said, now, now that's a demon. And you're making your kids. The point is this. That's sin. And it's taken out the whole family. But the Bible says I can conquer it in Jesus' name. I can conquer it in Jesus' name. There's nothing better to conquer your eating habits than fasting. Just slap your body. You're not eating for a while. You're not eating for a while. In about three days, your body gets in the mode. And then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, twenty-one, thirty, forty. I mean, it just gets in the mode of not eating. Did you know that? It just, the hunger goes away. But then the body gets trained. A snack is okay. But I'm just telling you how important it is that Christians have the ability to say no to sin. It's in the B-I-B-L-E. Amen. So, but the point is this. I even got sidetracked here. When you see sin in a situation... Don't hang around. Run. That's the only way, you know, the Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, bad company corrupts good morals. It says, don't be deceived. It says, don't be deceived. Evil company, evil company results in bad fruit. It just does. So you just understand how important that is. 1 Timothy 2.22 says, flee also youthful lusts. The, the passion says, run as, run as fast as you can <laughs> from all ambition and lusts of youth. Amen. Then he goes on and says, pursue. Uh, the Amplified says, chase after. Chase after whatever builds your faith, whatever deepens your love, and helps you pursue the things of God. Get around people. I like to get around people that love God more than I do. I like to get around people that are doing more for God than I'm doing. I like that. I'm not threatened. You know what that is? That challenges me. I want to be, able, I want, I want to be stirred up to go further, to go fast, faster. I don't hang with people that are, well, they're just figuring out where John 3.16 is. I love them. I'm going to work with them. But that's not where I want to live. I want to live. That's why part of the reason I like to hang with Brother Ted and, he, and, the, and the way he operates you know, when he operates the thing, he says, I don't eat that. The, the whole week I'm preaching, I don't eat. Because I've got to move in the miracles so much. Especially in a foreign place. And I just spend my time praying in the word. And so you understand, people pay a price. And he talks about the price people pay for the, for the gospel. And I like to hang around people. They're talking about, I'm going to take over America. I'm believing God. I've written every governor of the 50 states. I've written them a personal letter. With a prophetic word in every one saying how we need to have a crusade in their state. And about over half of them written back said, come on. Even governor of New York, they've been dialoguing back and forth. And Brother Ted said to have a crusade in New York. I mean, I like to hang with people that are making a difference. Amen. I don't want to talk about people that here. You heard what the news just said? No, no, it's bad. So what else is new? But we got to receive the word of God. The Bible says, now I'm teaching this to you. But let me tell you what sin will do if you don't deal with it. It'll shut down the very help I'm trying to give you. The very thing I'm trying to give you is going gonna, is, is gonna to bounce off you. Listen to this. Go to, you know, and it's, go to James chapter 1. You remember it says in the book of Hebrews 4.12, it said that, that the word of God is, is alive and full of power. It's alive and full of power. It's alive and powerful. But it will not be powerful if you, if you have issues with your life. You'll, it'll, it'll miss your spirit. James 1, 
uh, 21. James 1, 21. It says, therefore, lay aside, this is something we do, all filthiness and the overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Now the King James says, lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. <laughs> but I want to talk about that in a minute. But filthiness means a personal delight in licentiousness and impurity. He's talking to Christians, lay aside a pursuit, and licentiousness is sexual immorality. Well, you just kind of hang in things that are not pure and not clean while you're out there. And if you have this attitude of filthiness, meaning that you allow impure things into your life, in your house, what you watch, What's in your mind? What will happen is that attitude will close the word of God to penetrate your life to bring about its saving power. Because the Bible says sin shall not have dominion over you. But you can't know that in your head. It's got to be in your spirit. You got to know that you know that sin cannot dominate me. And so I can close. He's talking about the very sin of just being impure. Impurity will shut the door to the revelation God wants to give you. Now watch this. It says naughty. I know it doesn't say, it says right here, it says uh, um, an overflow of wickedness. The naughtiness, the, superflu the superfluity of naughtiness, you know when a kid's naughty, we talk about a naughty boy. Maybe that's a, that's a British thing. The boy is naughty. If a, if a boy is naughty, it means he cannot take correction. In fact, not only will he not take correction, He'll talk back in your face. He'll argue with you. Why he doesn't want to do that? If you have a child that does that, you have a naughty child. <laughs> but the superfluity, there's an overflow of naughtiness or wickedness is that you will rebel against God, that you will do things that you know are displeased to him, but you'll do it anyway because that's what you want to do. This is very powerful because what happens is we allow this, we accommodate it, and it stops what God wants to do in your life. Romans 9.20, it says, but who are you to reply to Almighty God? What are you as the pot saying to the potter? I don't like this. Wait a minute. you got to watch your attitude with God. The Bible says you cannot lay aside. He's talking about sin, filthiness, and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness. Now, what's meekness? Meekness has to do with um, a quiet spirit. A humble spirit, a patient spirit, a spirit that's open-hearted. A meek spirit is a spirit that has the fear of the Lord. There's a reverence and respect for God. You must have that in order to receive from God. You've got to get, come to the altar, get rid of rebellion, get ri rid of arguing, get rid of superfluity of naughtiness and filthiness because you will shut the power of God down for you. And, the, and, and if you think about what the Word of God, the Bible says the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And Jesus, in Revelation 1.16, he said the sword came out of his mouth. But what does the sword do? When you cut with a sword, It divides. And it divides between two camps. It divides. It divides for those that want to receive the message for those who don't want to receive the message. In 1 Corinthians 1.18, Paul said, the preaching of the cross was foolishness to those who heard it. Yet, but for us, it was the power of God and salvation. Now think about that. Same word, same preaching, but the division is different. And let me tell you what it is. It's the response to the word. But if your mind is polluted with sin, you can't hear the word. That's why if you come in here and you sit and you argue in your spirit or you've talked bad about this pastor, I'm just trying to help you, and you run me down, that's a sin. Your mind will shut down from hearing. 
So the whole thing about Jesus said, I'm going to separate mother from daughter, son from father. I've come to bring a sword. I'm going to separate what? Those, what's the separation about? How you respond to the word, that's the separation. Do you receive with meekness, with humility? Yes, Lord, I'll apply it. Or do you receive with arrogance and you have a better idea and you reject it? And so this book, which we're reading on right now in Romans, is talking about the reality that sin has been brought under your feet. And you don't need to argue with your mind or let your emotions get involved. You just need to have an open heart, open mind. Say, God, if your word says it, it's true. If I don't experience it, doesn't mean the word's not true. It means that I've got to come in line with the word of God. That's the difference. Amen. And so we got to see in these last days, we got to talk against sin because sin is the thing that takes the power out of your life. And God wants you to live on top of everything on this planet. Do you understand that? Over all fear, immorality, all the things that are going on in the world today is like a sewer in our society. And what's sad is the Christians are jumping in the sewer. Well, I just want to relate to everybody. I'm going to just think like the rest of them. No, we love the sinner. Don't get me wrong. We love the sinner. But I'm not going to commit sin just so I can win them. That's not the wisdom of God. Amen. So, um, he says he divides. There's, there's this word, Romans, I mean, Hebrews 4, 12. It's sharp as a two-edged sword. It divides from the asunder or splits apart the soul from the spirit. And... So we, we, we must learn how to receive it. We must learn how to receive that word. Let me tell you, in Psalm 25, it talks about how to receive the word. Just samples. Psalm 25. It's in your Bible. I'll just read it. 8, verse 8 and 9. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. Now watch this. The humble he guides in justice. And the humble he teaches his way. Verse 12. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. Verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So we got to look at the word of God with greater respect than we've ever looked at it. And what God gives us, we need to receive in the mighty name of Jesus and say, Lord, I can live over sin. And when you sin, don't call it not a sin. Call it a sin and repent. How often do I do that? All the time. Join me in my doghouse. But I've just learned this. If you'll stay humble and admit it. Just admit it. I was impatient. Admit it. Repent of it. I said a sharp word, admit it, repent of it. Whatever comes up, it's like as soon as you do it, chop it. As soon as you do it, chop it. Why? Because we're not treating sin lightly. We're treating it as an enemy of our life. And I don't want any part of it. And so we've got to deal with things. Because a lot of times we're blinded to things that we do, especially husband, wife. Come on. And sometimes we get too... Blase about the relationship and the sins that bring separation between the fellowship. Amen. There's sins that separate us between us and God. Sometimes it takes the Holy Ghost to show us what they are. That's why revival is all about bearing your soul before God and giving God enough chance, meeting after meeting, to point things out that you can get free of so He can move in with greater power. That's why I love revival. Revival is always shining the spotlight. That's why I love encounter. For those of you who didn't sign up, well, I'm already Christian. No, God wants a purer life out of you. The more, the closer you get, the more purity you 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 you'll get from the Father. You live a more uh, you live an empowered life in the Holy Spirit. And we need these kind of lives in these last days. We need lives that are filled with the Holy Ghost. We are led of the Holy Ghost. If you're led of the Holy Spirit, everything you do, you led of the Holy Spirit, you become a pillar in the house of God. 
I can lean on you. You won't cave in under pressure. Because you're not led by the flesh. And you brought that flesh under. You brought it under. No, it's not acting out. I mean, how come they went over me when I thought I was going to speak and they just changed it and now he's speaking? Oh, really? Is your flesh dead yet? Let's go to verse 8. I mean, chapter 8. It goes... It says, therefore, there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. I must say, according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, that's a humongous statement. Number one, he says there's a law. What is a law? A law that's something that happens every time. If I jump off this platform, I can jump off a thousand times. I'm always going to go to the floor. I will never float up to the ceiling. That's a law. The law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus means that if I follow the spirit, I'll always have life coming to me. But if I follow sin, any sin, it'll always bring death. And how about you? I want to get closer to God, not further away from him. I want to get hotter for God, not cooler. And then look what it says here. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the light of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That's a lot just said, but let's just break it down. When Jesus went to the cross as a man, when Jesus died as a man, do you understand when he rose again, he destroyed the power of death, therefore he destroyed the power of sin. And the Bible says he condemned sin. That literally means he passed judgment on sin to say sin you'll no longer cause men to do things they don't want to do. The power has been broken. And he said, so that very thing that Jesus did, now we can have the same thing too. But the purpose, but, the, but he gives the scripture another bit of light here. He said the secret is this. You've got to live by your reborn spirit, and your reborn spirit has got to live by the living word of God. That word will separate you from the world. That word will cleanse you from the world. I promise you, the entrance of the word brings light, it, and, the, and it says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed to your word. There's, you cannot separate the spirit from the word. When you, bring in, when you follow the spirit that's within you, your spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit, It'll always lie with the Word of God. And so when you're a person of the Spirit, will always be a person who is looking to the Spirit. He's looking to his inner man and is always looking to what the Word says. And, he, and, and the more you grow in this, you could care less what you feel. What does feeling have to do with it? Well, I don't feel. No, no, that's what's messing you up. You, that's where you... That's where we miss the power of sin by walking in the Spirit. You literally dodge the bullet. They're trying to shoot you with machine gun, like, let's say every, every bullet's sin. <laughs> they can't get you. You missed again. You missed again. You missed again. Because I'm operating in the Spirit. If I operate in the Spirit, I miss every bullet shot at me. Listen, like, choo, choo, choo. But listen, as soon as I get in the flesh, as soon as I act out in the flesh, the bullets start hitting me. Bam. 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 And death comes. Some people take a long time to forgive other people. They get hurt. They meet with me in the office. They talk about it. When did this happen? About a month ago. Well, let's, let's, let's get forgiveness. Let's just ask forgive, 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 forgiveness. No, I'm not ready. What do you mean you're not ready? I don't feel like I, I'm not ready to forgive him yet. Do you understand how bad it was? Yeah, I got to know how bad it was. But the word says you need to forgive him. I'm not ready. I mean, I've, I heard it more than once. Well, that person is letting his flesh and his emotions run his life. And he is committing sin because he's not forgiving. And the devil's taking advantage of him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be in my office. They'd have the victory. In Jesus' name. By the way, I want to have a sign outside my door. Don't even think about letting me counsel you unless you attend church regularly, pray every day, read the word, tithe, and serve in the church. Because if you're not doing those five things, you're in rebellion. No wonder the devil's got your back. I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, 
No wonder. I mean, please just get with the program. Read the Word and do it, please. Yeah, you need to under, understand every sin is a portal that the devil will use. Like if God tells you to give money and you don't give it, you know what, we don't may not feel it right away, but something's, uh, where Galatians 6 says, whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. That's what God said. If you sow to the flesh, you'll of the flesh reap destruction. If you flow to the, flow, or sow to the spirit, you'll of the, of, the, of the spirit reach uh, uh, harvest life. And so people come to me, they say, I'm, I'm good now, I've, I've repented. But my wife left me, and I'm broke. But I had all this money. I mean, I can tell story after story. But it's like a pattern. No, no, no. For 10 years you did this. You sowed the sin. Then in one year you, re you repented. Now you're in with, you're growing in your faith. But that harvest is now coming back at you. Now you can ask God for a crop failure. <laughs> or minimize, Lord, we can show mercy and God will. I told one individual, I said, you need to be in church every single time the doors open, Sunday, Wednesday, and serve in the house. If you're truly repentant, come to a small group, get accountable, and put your nose into the Bible. I said, if you do that for one year, you'll be different. We'll see what happens. Some people just want a quick fix. They don't want to really pay the price. It's not going to work that way. But the Bible says here, but it's all about, uh, in verse uh, where are we? Five. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now that's a big word right there. It must say set your mind. It goes right along with the thing let. You set your mind. That's a very interesting set of words. You must learn to focus your life on the spiritual man inside of you and the Word of God you're putting in him. That's your focus. The Bible says that many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. That's in the same chapter, verse 14. He's talking about you've got to be led. Listen to me. This thing about being led by God's Spirit is the secret to missing the force of sin and letting sin miss you while you just walk in the power of the life of God. When you got the life of God, it's got there in right there in Galatians 5, 6, uh, chapter 5. It talks about walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember that says that, 16? And then it, gives, and then it goes on, in, in I believe it's 20, 21, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. When you walk in the Spirit, love will flow out of you. When you walk in the Spirit, you'll have joy. When you walk in the Spirit, the peace of God will rest in your heart and mind. Now, folks, let me tell you this. You can have all the money in the, in the world, but if you don't have joy, you don't have peace, you know, they said that the Rockefellers, the early Rockefellers, with all their money, they hated competition, and they're part of the globalist team. Uh, if you're in competition, you, you became the enemy. But they said they never had enough. They feel with all their billions, they never had enough. They would feel annoying. They'd get ulcers because they didn't know someone was taking their money because they could. Because greed, there's no end to greed. Because you're trying to have fulfillment in the God of money. And it's a cruel taskmaster. It'll never let you be satisfied. But God will satisfy you in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand, the pleasures, for, pleasures forevermore. I mean, God will bless you with his presence. Do you realize it's not the amount of things you have, but it's, the, but it's your walk with God. It's the peace of God that you carry in your heart. It's, his, it's the gentleness of the Holy Spirit. It's the patience of the Holy Spirit. It's the meekness that you carry with you. Uh, do you understand that the more that you walk in the Spirit and you bring this flesh on, the more that Jesus begins to come out of you. And Jesus is beautiful. Jesus is wonderful. I tell my daughters, when they marry, they're going to marry. Marry some man who loves Jesus more than you. That's what he does. No, no, no. Jesus is more important to me than you. My time with Jesus is more important than my time with you. There's a balance in that. Got to be careful. I sometimes push it. He says, you just spend the time in the study about me. And so I have to divvy that out. But anyway, I, I'm telling you the joy of life to know that he gives us the plan on how to have this life. It's a law. Here's the law. Every time you make decisions based upon your spirit, your renowned spirit man that lines up with the word of God, life is being added. You, 
you get that? Life is being added. But as soon as you become, watch this, self-centered, selfish, what about me, hurt feelings, every decision made on that is a fleshy decision. And it will always bring death. When I mean death, a little bit less joy, a little bit less contentment. Some people never are content. They're always, just chill out. <laughs> Quit trying to dot every I and cross every T. Relax. Let God have it. All right, just relax. Just relax. People get way too uptight. I can't run a ministry that way. I just launch fires, go. But I got to teach people, chill. Be very careful of letting your identity be tied with your ministry. Your identity is not tied in your ministry. It's tied with Jesus. Ministry could come and go, flop, fail, succeed. But your identity has got to be in who you are in him. Your walk with God is the most critical thing of your life. And walking in the spirit. He said, if those that are, it says the next verse, those that are spirit-minded have life and peace. But those that are fleshly-minded have death. So you have to check on your life. What death do I let in my life? What sorrow? What confusion? It's choices in the flesh that bring torment to our life. We make decisions because our minds are not set on the spiritual part of us. But our minds are set on our emotions and our reasoning. And your reasoning outside the word of God can come to a faulty answer. So this thing about taking out sin is for everybody, every believer. But we've got to be very we have to, how should I put it? We have to apply ourselves to what the word says. This sin is not going to conquer me. It says that same verse in 13. I love the, all the scriptures to go down. It says, by the spirit within you, put to death the deeds of the body. Put to death. So I'm going to do that. When you get the Bible and you read the Bible, and you're busy, got a lot of things. You, 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 if you're too busy for the Bible, you're too busy. I'm going to read the Bible. And, and you know what, flesh, you're going to sit down and listen. And then flesh, you're going to pray. If I feel like my flesh gets reared up and says, you know, you got so much to do today, don't you pray so much, I will just double it on purpose. With that whole thing about the COVID, everybody said everyone's hiding under sofas and no one's opening a church. I said, you know what? We're going to make this the other way around. We're going to start having services every day. I did it on purpose. Why? To bring the flesh under all the fear, all the angst, all the stuff that's going on in the airways. Go against the very thing. You know what? Because you go by your spirit. I felt led of God to do it. I even talked to your brother Ted. He said, man, go for it. And what happens is we had great fruitfulness. We had joy in that camp. We had healing in the camp. We had people increasing in the camp. And I talked to other people that didn't do that. They're still in the slough of despond. No victory. Just defeat. Why? Because they're led by their flesh. The flesh, well, we've got to be safe. Uh, let me tell you this. God, if, with God, it's not foolishness, but you've got to stretch yourself in your faith. Got to go by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost who lives in you. And actually, I believe he's actually referring to your spirit in those verses in the book of Romans 8. Be led by your spirit, but your spirit and the Word got to be, they're connected. So here's a great challenge for the believer to practice setting your mind and your spirit. You need to say, I am a spirit. I live in a body. I have a soul. 
but I'm first a spirit being. You need to repeat that many, many times over. I do. Many, many, many times. Let the reality that you're a spirit being come to pass. And your spirit's alive to God. And your spirit has dominion over your flesh. And the more the revelation comes alive to you, the more you'll say no. Your no will get stronger and stronger. No, I won't listen to that in Jesus' name. You know, people come and, you know, in the past, it's, it's fun to grow up in these things. If you're in my position, then people have opinions about everything you do. And they're not always good. There'll always be an opinion. Well, let me tell you what I think. I remember in the early days, it would bug me. I said, God, why can't everybody be pointing the same direction? There's always one sheep going this way and this way. It's just, and finally I had to learn that that's the way it'll always be. There'll always be some fly in the ointment while, while we live on earth. I promise you, it'll just, there's very few things you pull off. That came off perfectly. No, there'll always be something, somebody, and everything's going great, and everything's, I mean, I've just learned, what you do is, you focus on the spirit. But I get my flesh to get tore up. My own son helped me as years ago. He's like six. And I'm, I used to want, you know, if I messed up in the service, I would be driving him in the car and I'd be mumbling under my breath. I should have done that, should have done this. That wasn't the best. My son told me, Dad, what are you doing? I'm just talking about the service to myself. He said, yeah, but it's not good. You got to stop that. You know what? Out of the mouth of babes. Amen. I said, son, Amen. God spoke through you. Amen. I'm going to stop that. Yeah. I've never done it since. Yeah. In fact, I've graduated a whole lot further. Yeah. People can come on me, this, that, the other. I go to God. And it literally, it becomes water for ducks back. Yeah. What? You know why? Because it's not about me anyway. Hey, it's not about me. It's about him and his purpose. Hey, I'm just a delivery boy. I'm nothing. I am absolutely nothing. I've got nothing to prove. I don't want to be known. I don't, my I don't need my name in lights. I don't want books to be known. I don't, I don't care. People keep telling me, you know, Pastor, this guy called me up and said, we're going to put you in crusades, big crusades. You're going to get on the thing. Get, you're going to really promote you. I tell you, it's going to be awesome. I said, you know what? You're barking up a wrong tree. That's not me. But what is you? Promoting my people. That's me. So I started setting up people for Pakistan. You want to preach for Pakistan? I'll set it up. Right back here. You preach to Pakistanis for an hour. The guy called me back. He said, you won't believe it. He laid this how many people came their lives to Christ, miracles, and, we, and they all got Bibles. My heart is just to help the body get out there. That's my heart. I'm not just making it up. But if you go by your spirit, by the Holy Ghost, inside your spirit, your spirit man has answers your head doesn't know. Does that make sense? And your spirit man, the more it's educated in the word of God, it will lead you to the path of life. In so many areas lead you to the path of life. I could have gone by my emotions and not married my wife. I went by the spirit, I married my wife. I could have gone by emotions and never left the business world. I went by the spirit, I left the business world. I can tell you, every time you make moves according to the Spirit, it impacts you right down the road. It'll, it, it'll bring increase to you. It'll bring the release of God's power. It will bring the release of God's favor. Everything because you go by the Spirit. But you recognize when you step in the flesh, you step into sin. Because it's sin is always self-centered. It's always, what about me? How do I look? What do I get out of it? How do I benefit? You know, let God do the benefiting. You live, that's what Jesus put this way. He said, listen, that's why the kingdom of God is a paradox. The way up is down. The way to get more is give. He said, you want promotion? Serve. Whoever is the greatest servant will be the greatest minister in my eyes. If you really believe that, that's I put a gauntlet down, the race is on. I want to out-serve everybody. Serve. Give your life away. Give your life away. Let other people get ahead of you. Promote them. Exercise grace for them. I mean, just show favor to them. Amen? Amen? I tell you what, it is like the greatest joy in life when we find out I can knock it in the head. Sin shall not have dominion over me. 
I want to just flow in the Holy Ghost. And on Sunday morning, when I look across the crowd, you see people struggling, and you see people happy, and you see people sad, and everyone's got different things they're going through. But my heart is, everyone get over in the Spirit. Get over in faith. Walk in the Spirit. Crush sin. And watch God do what he wants to do for your life. I just got this by the Holy Ghost. If sin, disobedience brings delay, obedience and yielding to the Spirit bring acceleration. Here's the idea, look at it, it brings acceleration. Literally, the more yielded you are to what you want, what he wants for you, the more he can promote you. And promotions are coming. Promotion is coming. No, no. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. In Jesus' name. Promotion is coming.